Well, you just saw Mike Pence and Kamala Harris square off in one vice presidential debate, and it comes one week after a presidential debate that saw insults flying. As Mary Maloney reports, tonight's clash was civil but still heated. The first and only debate between the vice presidential candidates taking on an outsized role in an election that's been upended by the coronavirus pandemic and the economic turmoil it has caused. Whatever the vice president is claiming the administration has done, clearly it hasn't worked. From the very first day, President Donald Trump has put the health of America first. Vice President Mike Pence and Senator Kamala Harris facing off in Salt Lake City after President Trump and at least 10 other senior officials at the White House tested positive for COVID-19. The candidates drawing stark contrasts in policy and personality. President Donald Trump, who brought all of that experience four years ago thank you, thank you, and President. turned this economy around by cutting taxes, rolling back regulation. Joe Biden believes you measure the health and the strength of America's economy based on the health and the strength of the American worker and the American family. On the other hand, you have Donald Trump, who measures the strength of the economy based on how rich people are doing. Harris putting the focus on the man who isn't there, President Trump, and criticizing the administration's handling of the coronavirus pandemic. They knew what was happening and they didn't tell you. Pence painting Harris as a progressive by highlighting her past support for the Green New Deal and Medicare for All legislation. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris consistently talk about mandates, and not, not just mandates with the coronavirus, but a government takeover of health care, the you, Green President New Pence. Deal, all government control. We're about freedom and respecting the freedom of the American people. In Salt Lake City, I'm Mary Maloney. Joining us now to talk about what transpired tonight is Dr. Kira Green with the Center on Policy Initiatives. And Dr. Green, the response from both camps already pouring in tonight, both sides saying they had a good night. COVID-19 was front and center. Kamala Harris came out strong, called that a failure. Pence was able to come back to the economy and jobs pre-pandemic and look toward the future. But they both refused to answer questions tonight. So let's start with Harris. She would not answer whether she and Biden will pack the Supreme Court if they're elected after Amy Coma Barrett's possible appointment to the Supreme Court. How much does that hurt her ticket with the undecideds? I'm not sure that it hurts her ticket at all. In fact, the fact that both of these candidates didn't uh, respond to questions about the Supreme Court really, I think, is a case of them trying not to have a quote that can be used against them. But I think both were pretty clear about where they stand, and I think most voters know where they stand on, this, on these issues. VP Mike Pence failed to answer, even in the hypothetical, if Roe versus Wade is pushed to the states and where he would stand on that. Again, how risky is that? I think it's not as risky as it might seem, just to be frank. I think uh, Vice President Pence's record as a pro-life candidate is well known. Uh, even a little bit of research would show that. And the president and the vice president have been quite outspoken about that position. They see that as something that plays to their base. And while they, again, don't want to be caught with a quote that clearly lays that out in terms of the Supreme Court appointment, I think all the elements are there and people heard it. Senator Kamala Harris, best moment. Uh, Senator Harris's best moment, really, I think there are two big moments. One is her discussion about the economy, I think drawing a stark contrast between the framing of Joe Biden as the person who looks out for families and everyday people, and President Trump being a person who judges the economy based on how well it does for rich people. I also expect to hear her honest Abe quote, while it might not be getting a lot of attention tonight, over the next few days as we actually debate a Supreme Court nomination, I suspect this will come back and be used consistently to sort of outline a position. VP Mike Pence, best moment. I think Vice President Pence's best moments come when he's talking about foreign policy. I thought it was a particularly astute choice because it both placed strongly to the image that the president puts out as a very strong man who takes strong positions. And it also plays well in a moment where Americans are afraid of many things, but due to COVID, they're not so much afraid of the foreign policy threats, the terrorism threats that dominated in the past. So I thought that was a good thing for him to focus on. I thought it was less convincing some of the other arguments for foreign policy. I thought he was very strong. All right, thank you, Dr. Green, for your expertise. Less than 30 days left, and we know you'll be back with us between now and Election Day. Thank you for your time. Thank you.